Welcome back to the Energy Sovereignty Project and another in our series of subscriber systems. And more accurately, in this case, it's actually a revisitation of an earlier install. You'll remember Lee's system where he installed a two power wall system in his garage. Well, Lee's decided to expand his system for energy sovereignty. And the reason I thought this would be an interesting one to look at is that his expansion wasn't in the PV on the PV side, but it was all in the battery side. And in his case, he uses about a third less power than the Energy Sovereignty Project does to run his home. He's running about, if you average it out for the entire year, he's running about 20 kilowatt hours per day, whereas the Energy Sovereignty Project is running at 30 kilowatt hours per day. And what the additional batteries allow him to do is to achieve energy sovereignty with the addition of his new electric car. He's expecting a Model Y in the next few weeks. Hopefully we'll uh, be able to go back over there and, and uh, cover his personal experiences with, uh, uh, with the addition of the vehicle. That would be also an interesting thing to uh, uh, follow up on. But he's not expanding his PV system just yet. He might at a later date when he adds a second electric vehicle and their household goes uh, all electric. But for now, he was noticing that he was actually able to bank a considerable amount of power and currently that power is being banked by his utility provider, in his case SMUD. Now, the problem with that is twofold. Firstly, obviously, is then you're beholden to the utility company to get that power back. And if you have a power outage, if you have, if you're a PG&E customer, certainly this kind of a thing is is and 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 in a remote area, this kind of thing is very important to you. Uh, he wants to be able to obviously be able to bank that power at his home to use in his vehicle rather than relying on the grid exchange there. But the second reason is, is that currently these utility companies are trying to use this as a means to bludgeon the consumer to have punitive fees for people that have solar. And again, that's entirely based on the fact that their argument is, is that our use of the grid power is abusive. It's excessive. Uh, and that's all relying on that duck curve. Now, the more PV you put in in your house, the more radical that duck curve is and the more power they have to bank and they obviously don't want to be cutting you a check at the end of the year. Well, his increase in on-site capacity helps to mitigate that and again I'm thinking what he'll discover is, is that it'll mitigate it entirely because all of that excess will wind up going into his vehicle and then over time it'll be fun to uh, follow his household as you followed the energy sovereignty project to kind of see what little tweaks he makes to be able to uh, uh, make his daily life smooth and then we'll follow up and see how much he ultimately saves in uh, in fuel savings. But with that, let's go ahead and take a look at the expansion of Lee's system to a four power wall system. Well, welcome back to the Energy Sovereignty Project and our subscriber systems uh, and back here with uh, Lee and his system. So you wound up uh, uh, stacking on another couple of uh, couple power walls. Correct. Yeah, now we have four total. Yeah. So uh, was that mostly the, the, the uh, addition of the car, you're expecting a Model Y pretty soon. Right, right. Yeah, I, yeah th that and I was noticing that, uh, in fact, these last few days here when the uh, weather's been so uh, overcast and that, that uh, we've been running out of battery power. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We're not able to fully charge and so putting in two more batteries, hopefully we'll be able to get us through this without having to depend so much on the grid. Right, right. And that, which is, uh, really, my goal is to try and get off the grid as much as possible and, right. and, and still be able to produce. And the system on a sunny day is, uh, produces plenty of power to charge up four batteries mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and still cover the house and still put some back out to the grid. Do you recall what you've been producing per day or so? Uh, uh, we've been up, actually, uh, some of the days, over 30, 35 uh, mm -hmm. Just early in the year, that's good. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. It, uh, it was really, you know, we put the first ones in in September, about the middle of September. And we were doing gangbusters up until about uh, middle, late November. Right. And then it got to where we weren't charging 100%. And December and January was uh, was really, uh, we couldn't get, get enough to any, get, get anywhere near full batteries. Mm -hmm. February was mm -hmm. really good weather. And February was back, we were, we were back like it was August. Right. And uh, so anyway, 
the two more batteries to have a little more capacity to, to store. Sure. And uh, like I say, yeah, when the car, yeah, yeah. car gets here, yeah. hopefully within another month or so. Yeah, that'll really come in handy in the in the in the middle of the summer for the vehicle. But yeah, like you were pointing out, you know, the uh, when you get into these shoulder periods, that's one of the things where you know we've been trying to caution folks not to not to scale these systems down. Uh, you know, the first thing obviously that you found out, you know, each one of these is five kilowatts. So if you only have one or two, then sometimes you'll even have a problem being able to have enough delivery to run the entire home. Right. And so really kind of three uh, that with these uh, with these models, Tesla's supposed to be coming out with a new power wall that might have a little more uh, delivery. We'll talk about that later on. But uh, um, three is really kind of the, the limit right now as far as the, the low rent if you're trying to run your house off of it. And what we just found out with this last, you know, period two and, and, and earlier as we went through the, the year, you know, you mentioned this, this period of rains that we've had. Right. Um, we're down to, I think our system now is, um, we're at like 26% or something like that, that we, we built up. Tomorrow's going to be a sunny day. And so we will have weathered that for exactly the same reasons. Right. And you know, our, our home usage is a little more than yours. So four batteries is, is a perfect right. size for, uh, for what you, yeah. you're, you're pulling. Well, the two batteries, even though we're all electric, the two batteries have, you know, like in the summer when you run the air conditioner right. and, and all that, uh, we never had any problem with that. Okay. But uh, it's just that it's when it gets to this, you know, inclement yeah. weather and yeah. when, yeah. when it's, uh, we're not charging up like we not want and when yeah. we, the batteries are down to, well, I've got it set at 20% so that mm -hmm. uh, uh, they'll discharge down to 20 and then, uh, you know, unless the grid power goes out, we, we don't you go any lower right. than that. Which happened the other day was the uh, there was a uh, accident and knocked a That's what you said. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, I didn't even realize the power was off until uh, somebody had uh, I saw an email uh, from one of the neighbors right. and wanted to know why the power was out. And uh, I looked at the app and there it was showed that the grid was down. Sure, sure, but. Uh, House, everything was doing fine. We didn't, we didn't miss a beat. So, but system is functioning like we wanted to. So. Mm -hmm. And and you mentioned also that uh, um, you have about a, a hundred and change mile commute that you uh, right. uh, that you do a couple times a week as well. And right. so uh, you know this will also allow you to kind of uh, uh, maximize the amount of, of charge that you can then uh, put into the vehicle right. and store it up. You know while you're coming home <laughs> right. and then just draw it out so yeah. outstanding outstanding yeah. well so we're uh, right here in the uh, uh, middle of this uh, coronavirus uh, uh, thing so uh, uh, you know live long and prosper and uh, <laughs> you know we'll, uh, uh, we'll, we'll we'll come and check in on you when uh, once you get it going I'd love to uh, see the car when you finally okay. get the car and uh, kind of take a look and see what the uh, uh, usage is how how your usage uh, uh, has, has has changed generation okay. and and storage for the uh, for the battery system, but it's a good looking system. I mean that's a that's a good thing to close on as yep. well. In that uh, um, you're not going to get mass adoption on a system that looks like some kind of crazy do it yourself project. And all of this just kind of looks like it belongs here, you know, just like any other uh, any other kind of garage appliance. So that's. Yeah, that was good. Very, very happy with SunWorks and the, the job they do, and and uh, of course the Tesla. You, uh, you can't beat that. I think they got yeah. the, the best out there. Yeah, they really do. They really yeah. do. Okay. Well, right. hopefully you'll invite us back when you get all your other stuff Everybody going. Does. And uh, thanks for uh, joining us and and okay. and checking in with uh, Lee's system here. And we'll go back over to the uh, uh, studio and and close us out a little bit. Thanks a lot. Sure thing. I hope you guys found that to be a bit of fun. Thank you, Lee, for inviting us over to uh, see your system, and uh, best of luck with it. And we look forward to following up with you in a couple of weeks after you get the system online to uh, kind of see what your thoughts are uh, about it. So thanks, everybody, for joining. Good luck with your own systems, and we'll see you soon.